All right, I'm going to share with you guys some shortcuts for working with the eyedropper tool and working with curves. Now, if you do use curves and use the eyedropper tool to look at your information, you'll probably know some of these, but hopefully you pick up a few tips. To get to the eyedropper tool, I'll press the letter I, and in Photoshop here, I've got a picture open. And what we typically want to do is we want to set sample points and look at the information out in the picture here just to gauge what happens while we correct the image, right? So I'm going to make sure that I've got my layer over here unlocked. So I'm going to alter option, double click on the thumbnail. Come out here with the eyedropper. Now we can use what's called a precise cursor with this thing by just pressing caps lock if we want to. And you see a little more precise cursor. Hit caps lock again, lock again and it goes away. When I go to sample and set sample points out in the image, just so I can track what's going on, I usually will change the sample size up here to something like 5x5 five five or something similar. That gives me a more of a, a bigger average, a bigger area to average. Now to set sample points, we hold on the shift key and click. That sets one out there. You also notice over here in the info panel, we get the you know sample for that exact area and what the color information looks like. Now, we can set up to four of these if we want to by shift clicking out here. If you want to move one that you set, you can hold on the shift key again, hover over it, click and drag it and put it somewhere else and it'll just sample that new area. If you want to, let me move this back up, if you want to delete it, hold on shift alt on Windows or shift option on Mac, hover over the existing sample point and you'll see little scissors. You can just click and have it go away. All right, now, there's a lot of things we could do with the eyedropper, and we'll see them in conjunction with curves. If I come over to curves over here, and I use the adjustments over here, the adjustments panel, click on curves, I'll see we got the curves sitting out here. Now, a lot of things we could do out here. If you guys are familiar with curves, you're probably used to working with this a certain way, but there's a lot of shortcuts we can use. For instance, if we want to set the white and black point and see exactly where that is out here, you can use the white and black point uh, samplers right here. If I click on black point, for instance, come out to the image. I want to set the black point. Hold on Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, and it'll show you the clipping here. You'll actually see where it is. I click, I set it, and there we go. That's kind of cool, actually. You can do the same thing with the white point if you want. Now, another way I work out here is if you have the black point selected out here, if you hold on the Shift key and you click, you can actually set just a little eyedropper out there, or excuse me, a sample point, and work that way too. And that way you can do it with the white point as well. Now the white point will be a little different in this image, but it works the same way. Now also what you can do is if you're working with curves, what we want to do is I'm going to kind of back up here a little bit, get it back to normal. If we want to set points, I've got my eyedropper selected. As a matter of fact, let me turn the, the uh, black point off. I got my regular eyedropper selected. If we want to actually work with the curves and set points in the curves, there's 50 ways we can do this. Now, if we want to do it in the image out here, if I hold down Control on Windows, Command on Mac, and click out here and start dragging, first of all, you'll see the feedback out there in the image, but look at the curves over there. You'll start to see the little point being set on the curve itself. If I let go of my mouse and then let go of the Control on Windows, Command on Mac, I actually set a point over there in the uh, composite channel. Now, if I look at each one of the individual channels out here, I won't see a point set. As a matter of fact, I tend to use shortcuts to get between all the channels over here using Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alt, 2, Alt, 3, 4, 5, and you can see I'm just going between the color channels. Now, what's really cool about this, too, is if you have, you set a point out there, right? It's on a composite channel. You want to be able to work with it, et cetera. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. We can also set points on each of the color channels. If you go, let's say I use Alt, two, Alt 3, rather, Option 3 on Mac, go to the red channel. If you hold down control and you come to another part of the image here and you click and drag, you can start to see the point there. Let go of the mouse, let go of the control key on Windows, command on Mac. You can set a point just in that color channel. Now if I press Alt 4 or Option 4 on Mac, uh, Alt 5, you can see that it's not in any of the other color channels. If I go to the composite channel, which is Alt 2 on Windows, Option 2 on Mac, it won't be on the composite channel either. Now here's another interesting thing you guys can do. If you want to go out and you want to set a point somewhere, let's say in the water over here, something like that. And I want to be able to control the red, the green, the blue, or whatever you guys have to be working at at that moment. But you want to set a point at each of the color channels. If I hold down Control Shift, and I'm going to make sure you guys that I'm on my composite channel here. Hold down Control Shift and click somewhere. You'll see that I can move around once again. I'll set it like, let's say, right, uh, right there maybe. Let go of my mouse, let go of Control Shift on Windows, Command Shift on Mac. 
you'll see it doesn't set a point. But if I go to each of the composite channels, or the, excuse me, the color channels, Alt-3, Alt-4, Alt-5, it's showing up on each one of those, which is really cool. Okay. Now, here's another thing for working with, with curves that's really kind of kind of neat, very helpful if you guys do work with them. Let me go to the composite channel again, which is Alt-2 or Option-2 on Mac. If you want to go over and you want to adjust these points, you can do that pretty simply. Now, if one is already selected, you'll see it's it's no longer hollow. It doesn't have a hollow center. It's actually got a filled center. I can just use my arrow keys, up, down, right, left. And you can incorporate the shift key too. So hold on shift, go up, down, and just move this where you want to. Okay, and you can actually slide it up and down basically up on the, the curve up there. Now, if you want to go between the different points over there, you can use plus and minus on your keyboard too. So if you look over here, you notice how the middle one is selected. If I press plus, it goes up here and selects the one up there. If I use minus, it goes the other way. Now, if I just keep, keep hitting plus, it'll just keep cycling through, all the way through. You guys can see right there. Once I get to one I want to edit, I can just use my mouse, use my shift key, whatever I want to do here to be able to edit that. Let me go back up using plus and do something a little different. Increase contrast, whatever I'm going to do. Okay, That works for all of them. Now, if you decide that you have a point out there, like let's say the middle one here that I don't want, what I used to do is I used to sit there and click and drag it off or do different things, but you can also use your plus and minus to get to that point, make sure it's selected, and just hit the delete, the delete key. You can get rid of it. That's kind of cool. And then later on, using Control on Windows, Command on Mac, just click and drag. You can set another one out there if you find your area. Let go of the mouse, let go of the key, and just adjust using your arrows, your shift key, and kind of do what you need to do to the image. Okay. There's a lot of great things we can do out here, you guys, with curves. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a million other shortcuts we can use with this. But I just wanted to share some of these with you guys just so you can maybe work a little bit faster with curves and adjustments.